Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. I've uh, been fired. I've lost my job now at this point, uh, which was expected. Um, and they've also uh, rescinded the policy. Uh, they've sent out, uh, you know, the, the new policy saying um, CPR is now allowed. It's not mandatory, but uh, it's now allowed. So, so that's, that's the update. I have no job, but hopefully, hopefully uh, it's a little better around there. People can live. Just looking at the timeline, um, we published a report on June 5th. Um, Katie DeWitt, I believe, was terminated on June 17th. And then on June 23rd, um, the CPR uh, policy shifted. I'm assuming we can probably um, identify a correlation there, correct? I would, I would say no. It would have been, it, it would have been addressed. It was being addressed anyways before. So, you know, to be honest, Adam, I, I don't think it made any difference Adam Sos here for Rebel News, and I am outside of the Mustard Seed in Calgary, one of the many Mustard Seed locations. On June 5th, we released a video featuring Katie DeWitt, uh, a member of the staff of the Mustard Seed, expressing concerns, effectively acting as a whistleblower over the fact that CPR was not allowed to be provided for fear of the spread of COVID. That's right, life-saving measures were not allowed. Following that video, Katie DeWitt actually lost her job for coming forward and expressing these concerns. Her primary concern was always for saving people's lives. She loved and cared for the people at the Mustard Seed, the people that she worked with. So we're going to join her for an update on what happened with her. I also joined the CEO, Steve Weil, of the Mustard Seed for an update and for the opinion and take of the Mustard Seed on this matter. So I'm here with Katie DeWitt. You were uh, the person who came out to us with the story of the CPR policy at the Mustard Seed where people were not allowed to enact life-saving measures uh, for people because of the risk of spread of COVID. Uh, that was June 5th that we put that report out. Can you tell us what's happened with you since that time? Um, I've uh, been fired. I've lost my job now at this point, uh, which was expected. Um, and they've also uh, rescinded the policy. Uh, they've sent out, uh, you know, the, the new policy saying, um, CPR is now allowed. It's not mandatory, but uh, it's now allowed. So, so that's that's the update. I have no job, but hopefully, hopefully, uh, it's a little better around there. People can live. And then after the video came out, you said like almost immediately right after things changed at work. Is that true? Uh, yeah, it didn't. It didn't take very long. Uh, it was it was pretty quiet. It was uh, it was it was pretty weird. Um, I know that there was uh, there was people saying you know don't talk to me don't uh don't spread the video don't watch the video it was very hush hush um but uh, quite soon after that uh there was a whole verbal um we're allowed to do cpr again um that was quite a coincidence <laughs> Yeah, certainly. So we did speak with Steve Weil, CEO of the Mustard Seed, and we'll, we'll certainly share some of that audio. Um, and he seemed to deny any uh, idea that the change occurred because of this. But if we do look at the timeline, it seems we put out the video, they let you go, and they specifically mentioned your actions as a whistleblower as part of the reason why your position was terminated. And then just a few days later, they've, they've announced a CPR change. Um, I think probably for most viewers, it's going to be pretty apparent that the fact you came forward and the fact you functionally risked your job because you wanted to help save people's lives. I think that's a reality that's pretty apparent to people. So I want to thank you for having the courage to do that. Um, one of the things that the Mustard Seed pointed out to us is that there is a whistleblower policy in effect. And they suggested if you would have gone through that, that they might have addressed this and maybe maybe they wouldn't have gotten to it as fast as you like. But I think you, you'd mentioned that you'd talk to some people, you'd try to get something done. And for you, the urgency here was that lives could be in the balance. If you can maybe comment on that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that there were other people who tried to, um, you know, talk about the, the policy and um, people who were in a lot higher positions than myself. And I kind of figured, you know, like if, if people in like who have medical, like actual medical background, if they weren't being listened to, uh, it's almost, I guess, a waste of time for, for me to try that route because who am I? I'm just a frontline staff, you know work in the front lines without much behind my belt besides my 
uh, three years. Right. So you mentioned it to some of some people who you thought were in charge and would be able to elevate it. Do you know if any of them sort of escalated that concern? Um, I don't believe so. it was it was pretty like hush hush, like kind of do your job. Like, uh, you know, the, there was the threat of people losing their job for performing CPR. And then, um, you know, people rely on, on money to, you know, take care of their families, to take care of themselves. So uh, it, when you have that that imbalance, uh, that imbalance of power and that that fear, like every everything is totally operating out of fear. Um, you know, you, you try a little bit and when you get shut down like that, uh, you, you stop because you want your job and you want to take care of your family. Well, on that note, I do want to say to anyone out there who is hiring, uh, you have someone here who's willing to do the right thing, even if it means costing their job. So if you're looking for a principled individual, look no further. I think I want to thank you for reaching out to us. Um, clearly, you did this knowing there might be some risks and some consequences, but you love the guests, the people down at the mustard seed. Um, maybe considering you're not working there anymore, if you had a message to some of the guests who you've uh, had a chance to encounter over the years at the mustard seed. I love you guys so, so much. Um, you'll always be in my heart. And I know some of you have already reached out to me and I appreciate that. And you guys will always continue to be in my prayers. And uh, Jesus has got you, man. So um, we will be doing a, a follow up story as well. Um, so I just wanted to reach out um, and ensure that if you have any sort of uh, points that you'd like to add or clarifications you'd like to make, your side of the story is there as well. From a mustard seed perspective, you know, because of the um, the life-saving CPR policy at the time, uh, and you know, to be honest, all we were doing is following Alberta health guidelines mm -hmm. uh, at that time, and so uh, so this was their recommendation, that, and you know, so so we implemented it, um, but no one died at the mustard seed as, as a result of that. Uh, revision in the CPR um, uh, policy that that was written during COVID. So, so no one so, died because. So the incident there, there was. Are you saying there was not an incident in December as relate? There was. There was not. Uh, you know, like because of FOI, I, I could. You know, there's there's a lot I cannot share. Okay. But it didn't. That that death at the mustard seed had nothing to do with the CPR policy. You would say on behalf of mustard seed that that policy did not result in any death. Uh, absolutely, you know the individual was on oxygen when they passed away. And then to your point earlier, just to clarify, perhaps, um, I know you said that it was an Alberta Health Services policy, and part of what was relayed to us was that was dropped by Alberta Health Services, but then it remained at least for a, a, an extended period of time as, an, a, as a mustard seed policy, despite uh, AHS rescinding that. Was that a bureaucratic hang-up, or what was the, the reason for that delay from uh, mustard seed? Well, all, you, you know, I, I'm the CEO, so I don't, know all the details of everything that our, our team's uh, decisions they make. I do know that it was being reviewed by the team uh, even before the report. Okay. So, uh, so you know, and since that time, as you know, you know, we have, uh, we have enacted the old policy around CPR. Um, and then uh, just looking at the timeline, um, we published a report on June 5th. Um, Katie DeWitt, I believe, was terminated on June 17th, and then on June 23rd, um, the CPR uh, policy shifted. I'm assuming we can probably um, identify a correlation there. Correct? I would I would say no. It would have been it, it would have been addressed. It was being addressed anyways before. So you know, to be honest, Adam, I I don't think it made any difference in terms of you know you know we have processes, we have committees that look at these kind of things. Uh, and they were in the process of looking at it, and uh, you know, and, and because Alberta Health had had really dropped the the caution around it, right? Uh, we would have gone back to the, the original policy. I mean, and I think that we can we can certainly see we understand the urgency. Perhaps there were some foibles on a uh, policy perspective, but she definitely her primary concern was being able to help people. So um, I think that that's that's probably fair uh, to say. Um, 
Do you have any sort of comment on that? Um, obviously, this seems like it's, a, from your angle anyways, a procedural thing that was just being worked on. Um, she, according to you, didn't follow the correct uh, procedures. Um, do you have any sort of comments overall on the broader um, notion of caring and saving lives versus the procedural hang-ups? Well, I guess the only comment I have is what I is to reiterate what I said at the beginning, that that no one that was was being served at the mustard seed uh, died because of this policy. Okay. You know, Adam, our, our, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to serve people. We're trying to we're, we're trying to help them. We're trying to love them. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, most of them uh, are experiencing really unfortunate situations in their lives and uh you know our goal is uh our goal is to help them you know get back to you know a functioning part of society so yeah uh, you know you know we've got a we've got a, a team of almost 500 people that have strong compassion for the people that we serve and we would never um knowingly create a situation where um, their um, their their health or their life would be at risk, and um, you know we're trying to follow HS policies, and you know, yeah. maybe we're going quite fast enough for someone like Katie, but uh, you know you know there's, there's no malice here. Despite Steve Weil insisting that the mustard seed did not change their policy and that these works were already underway, the timeline to us seems a little suspicious. June 5th, we release our report. June 17th, Katie DeWitt is fired for acting as a whistleblower. And by June 23rd, the CPR policy change is in effect. We likely suspect that because of our reporting, that policy is in place. So that is good news. Not so much on the front of Katie DeWitt, who has lost her job, but she knew that she came forward knowing that it may cost her a job because she felt she was doing the right thing. And I want to thank Katie DeWitt for taking that courageous stance. If there are any more developments on this story, we will be certain to bring them to you. I want to thank you for tuning in. For Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. Hey guys, it's only a matter of time before YouTube deplatforms us entirely. You need to go to rebelnews.com so we can continue to share the other side of the story.